Hey everyone, welcome to Burgers Like Bob. Being a chef and a fan of Bob's Burgers, I've always wanted to taste the famous Burgers of the Day written on the chalkboard. While I may never have a burger cooked by Bob himself, I do want to see if his recipes are Teddy approved or if they should be sent to Mort's crematorium. So join me as we venture through the Bob's Burgers cookbook to see if we can, in fact, make burgers like Bob. Now the first burger up is the new Baconings Burger. So let's go. So one of the most important parts of a burger is the bun. Nothing ruins a burger experience like a weak and soggy bun. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we're gonna make our own buns from scratch. The first thing you wanna do is grab a small saucepan and a little whisk. You wanna make sure it's a little whisk, a big one won't work for this. Then you're gonna add 20 grams of all purpose or bread flour, and then 100 grams of water. And once that's all added, you're gonna take the whisk and whisk until it's smooth. Once it's smooth, we're gonna take it over to the stove. On high heat, keep cooking this mixture while constantly whisking until it somewhat thickens up. It might take a little while, but keep going. This is what it should look like. Then remove the pan from the heat and scrape the mixture into a bowl to allow it to cool to room temperature. Then go ahead and grab your stand mixer along with your mixing bowl and a dough hook. Then take 125 grams of warm milk and add it to a bowl. You want this to be about 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you're gonna take seven grams of active dry yeast and add it to the milk while whisking. Then set that aside for about five to 10 minutes. Then grab your stand mixer bowl and we're gonna add 350 grams of all purpose or bread flour, 50 grams of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. Then grab your dough hook and you're gonna give everything a good stir just to make sure everything is evenly dispersed. Then grab your mixer bowl and place it on the stand mixer, making sure it's snug. Then go ahead and attach your dough hook. At this point, you should be nice and foamy and quite fragrant. So go ahead and add that to the party in the bowl. Go ahead and add one whole egg as well. Then raise your mixer bowl and start to mix on low speed until somewhat shaggy dough starts to form. Once it looks shaggy like this, we're gonna grab our flour and water paste that should be at room temperature and add it to the dough. Then we're also gonna add 50 grams of room temperature butter. Then we're gonna mix until it starts to pull away from the sides and look like a smooth, cohesive dough. Once the dough is finished, grab the bowl and lightly flour your table. Then you're gonna take the dough out from the bowl flour the top and lightly knead into a ball. Then you're gonna place the stove into a greased bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Then we're gonna let this proof for one hour. Then after your dough has doubled in size, gently remove the dough from the bowl onto your work surface. Then you're gonna take out all of those frustrations and smack the air out of the dough. Once that is done, divide the dough into eight equal portions. Then once your dough is portioned, Grab some oil and a brush, along with a piece of plastic wrap and lay it on your table. Then lightly brush the piece of plastic with your oil. Then take the plastic and gently cover your buns oil side down. Then you're going to take your buns and proof for another 30 minutes. Once the buns are proofed, gently remove the plastic wrap from the top. Then you're going to take one egg mixed with one tablespoon of water and gently brush all over the top of the bun. Then once the buns are evenly coated in the egg wash, sprinkle some sesame seeds on top. Cause let's be real, sesame seed buns are just better. Then we're gonna bake these at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. And voila, homemade burger buns. Now when you look at the difference between this bun and this bun, it's not even close. Get rid of that thing. And now the beef. So grab a scale and a tray lined with parchment paper. Then we're gonna portion these into four quarter pound portions or four ounce portions. And then with your hands, take each portion and form it into an even patty like so. Then it's time to bust out the griddle and preheat to 350 degrees. Then grab two strips of delicious bacon and lay them onto your preheated griddle and listen to that sizzle. Cook the bacon until all the fat has rendered out and it's nice and crispy. Then go ahead and drain on a paper towel. 
And when you see this leftover grease, there's only one thing to do with it. Take your bun, cut it in half, and then we're gonna open it up and toast it in the baking vat. Hey, I never said it was a healthy burger. Check out those bad boys. Now show that patty some love and give us some salt and pepper. Then throw that thing on your griddle and let it cook. And while it's cooking, go ahead and slice a tomato, slice a red onion, and a couple pieces of leaf lettuce. Then flip your burger and let it cook on the other side. Grab a piece of cheddar cheese, throw it on top of your patty, and let that baby melt. Once it's melted, take your burger, set it aside, and let it rest for a couple minutes. It's been through a lot today. And grab your buns, your toppings, and your bacon. Time to assemble. First up is your lettuce. Put a couple pieces on the bottom. Then your burger on top of the lettuce. Then goes the tomato. Then on top of that goes that crispy, delicious bacon. Then your red onion goes on top of that and top it all off with your top bun. And there you have it, folks. The new Baconings Burger. There's only one thing left to do. The taste test. Now the big question is, is it Teddy approved? Or are we sending it over to Mort? I mean, it's a bacon cheeseburger. That's Teddy approved.